In chapter 15, we're going to be looking at solutions and solubility, process of solvation, molecular concentration, and the reactions that occur in solution. Solutions, if you remember from the first semester, are homogeneous mixtures. When we had mixtures, we looked at two types of mixtures. We had homogeneous mixtures and we had heterogeneous mixtures. A homogeneous mixture is a mixture where it's the same throughout. A homogeneous mixture contains two parts. It contains the solute, which is the thing that is being dissolved in the solution, the molecule or compound that is being dissolved in the solution, or and the solvent. The solvent is the substance that is doing the dissolving. It's the substance that's present in the largest amount. For example, if you had salt water, salt water is a solution of sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is the solute, water is the solvent. When we're thinking about solubility and determining whether something will dissolve or not, what we want to look at is the molecular structure of both the solute and the solvent. The term that we use frequently is like dissolves like. So when we're talking about like, what we're talking about is polarity. Polar substances dissolve other polar substances. Nonpolar substances dissolve nonpolar substances. So if they have the same polarity, they will generally dissolve in each other. If the solute is the same polarity as the solvent, you will see dissolving taking place. If the solute is a different polarity than the solvent, so one's polar, one's nonpolar, generally we do not get things dissolved. And the easy way to always remember that is like dissolves like. For example here, we have two examples. Will sodium bromide dissolve in water? Remember, sodium bromide, an ionic compound, has a cation and an anion, so it has that positive and negative charge. Water is polar. So in this case, they will dissolve, just like sodium chloride dissolves in water. The second one, will octane dissolve in wa water? Octane, commonly form, found in gasoline, is a nonpolar substance. Octane will not dissolve in water. If you've ever been to the gas station and you've seen that little film that forms on top of a little puddle at the gas station where a little gas has been spilled, that gas stays on the surface and does not dissolve in the water. When we're talking about solvation, there are two types of solvation that we look at, ionic solvation or molecular solvation. When an ionic substance dissolves in water, we've talked about this a little bit before earlier in the year, ionic substances dissociate, meaning they separate. The cation separates from the anion, Hydrogen bonds are formed with the water. So in a sense, the water actually pulls each of the ions out of the solid and into solution. This is easiest to see in a couple of diagrams and a video. First diagram here is sodium chloride. If you take sodium chloride, table salt, and put it into water, what will happen is that the sodium ions, the cations, and the anions, chloride, will separate in the solution. And they will not, no longer be stuck together. They'll be separate within the solution. How this actually happens, you can see in this diagram. You see the positive side of water, the hydrogen, is attracted towards the anion. And the negative side of water, the oxygen, is attracted towards the cation. The water molecules surround the ions and then pull those ions out into the solution and separate them from the rest of the solid. Now what I'd like to do is watch a brief video that shows you this with more animation and a little bit of explanation. Sodium chloride crystals are held together by attractive forces between the positively charged sodium and negatively charged chloride ions. When a crystal of sodium chloride is placed into water, the hydrogen ends of polar water molecules attract the negatively charged chloride ions and gradually surround them. Likewise, the oxygen ends of water molecules are attracted to and surround the positively charged sodium ions. The hydrated ions drift away into the solution, allowing new water molecules to surround newly exposed ions. Gradually, the entire crystal dissociates into solution. As you saw in that video, when we have an ionic substance, the individual water molecules are attracted to the individual ions. That doesn't happen with a molecular substance because the molecular substance is not going to separate the way an ionic substance did. So in this case, we have the molecular substance here in the middle. The 
water is attracted towards the hydrogens and oxygens on that molecular substances. It surrounds the whole substance, the individual molecule, but doesn't surround the individual ions. We commonly refer to this process as hydration. There are three main factors that affect the rate at which something dissolves. If we have something that does the same polarity and therefore dissolves in the solution, the three main factors we look at that increase or decrease the rate of dissolving are surface area, stirring, and temperature. The more interactions the water molecules or whatever the solvent has with the solute, the more dissolving that's going to take place. So if there's greater surface area, there's more of the solid that can interact with the solvent, dissolving takes place faster. Think about ground up uh, sugar versus sugar cubes. It takes longer for a sugar cube to dissolve than it does for the, uh, like a sugar packet where the individual crystals are much smaller. Stirring. If you want to make something dissolve more quickly, increase the number of interactions by stirring the solution. And the third one is temperature. Warm solutions dissolve more than cold solutions when we have a solid. It's actually different for a gas. Gas dissolves better in colder solutions and less at high temperatures. One easy example of temperature in the rate of dissolving is if you think of sweet tea. We all here in Georgia love our sweet tea. and sweet tea, you're putting sugar into iced tea. So the sugar would be the solute, the iced tea would be the solvent. Any good southerner knows that sweet tea, the best way to make it is to add the sugar when the solution is still hot. Not once it's gotten cooled down to iced tea, but once it's still hot tea, that's when you add the sugar. Then cool it down. It dissolves a whole lot better at high temperatures. If you put a sugar packet into cold iced tea, most of it sinks to the bottom and doesn't dissolve very well because it's at a much lower temperature where dissolving does not occur as easily with a solid. One of the things we look at when we're talking about solubility and how things dissolve is the solubility curve. The solubility curve shows the relationship between grams of solute per amount of solvent on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. We're going to look at an example curve here that shows lots of different substances. Here you see many, many different substances, CS2SO4, KNO3, NaClO3, PBNO32, and so on. Various colors here to help you show the solubility curve. You see solubility on the y-axis, temperature on the x-axis. You'll notice in most of these cases, the solubility increases as we move to the right, higher temperature, decreases to the left, lower temperature. Some increases more than others, depending on the substance we are dealing with. This is true for solids in solution. The graph would look very different for gases in solution. Gases dissolve less well at high temperatures, so we'd see an inverse relationship. The line is where we have the maximum amount of solve for that temperature. Above and below the line, we give different names. And let's go through the names of the various areas. Anytime you're below the line on the solubility curve, we refer to it as an unsaturated solution. An unsaturated solution is a solution where more solute can still be added to the solution. You could still add more and it would still dissolve. Anywhere below the lines on the solubility curve would be considered unsaturated. Saturated solution is where you have the maximum amount of solute dissolved for that temperature or in pressure. So anything that is on the line of the solubility curve would be saturated. We have a unique third condition known as supersaturated. In a supersaturated solution, you can have actually dissolved more solute than you should be able to. These have to be pre prepared very carefully and are usually very unstable. You heat a solvent to a high temperature, dissolve the solution to the solute to, to the saturation point, and then carefully cool it back down so that it ends up above the solubility curve. Supersaturated solutions are very unstable. One little crystal of the solute a lot of times will cause it to recrystallize and come out of solution. And we're going to see this in a short little video clip here. A small crystal of sodium acetate will be added to the solution.
Focus your attention on the portion of the solution to which the crystal is added. Here is the process again in slow motion. In that video clip you saw one little crystal being dropped into the supersaturated solution and how quickly the whole solution recrystallizes and goes back to solid comes out of solution in those cases. There are a couple of factors that affect the rate at which we dissolve. One, with solids, solids generally dissolve better at higher temperatures. Think about your sweet tea. Gases is the opposite. At a high temperature, less dissolves than at a low temperature. Think about a Coca-Cola. If you have a Coca-Cola and you leave it outside on a warm day and then you pop the lid on that Coca-Cola, usually a lot of times what will happen is it ends up exploding. Most of the gas comes immediately out of solution. It was under high pressure in the container and it got to a high temperature. As soon as you release that pressure, all of the gas comes out of solution. It stays much better saturation of carbon dioxide at a low temperature. That's why we generally keep our Coca-Cola refrigerated partially for taste, but also to keep that gas dissolved in the solution. It goes flat a whole lot easier when left at a warmer temperature. For class tomorrow, make sure that you have printed out the worksheet for chapter 15 so that we can work on that in class.